Hey guys, Stay Patient here, and today I'm going to show you how to overlay your Twitch chat onto your streams and recordings using just the Elgato software. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm quite new to the Elgato software itself. Um, I've been using it for a few months, and when I was learning how to use it, I was trying to figure out how people overlaid their Twitch chats. Now, upon looking, you know, through Google and searching YouTube and everything, all I found is people telling you that you need to use the OBS software, which is the open broadcasting software. Um, they say that you need to kind of coordinate that with your Elgato software, use them both in tandem with each other so that you can overlay your Twitch chat. But that gets very confusing. Um, I've tried out some of the YouTube channels that do, you know, specific tutorial videos for Elgato, even those that are sponsored by Elgato themselves and none of them had anything on this you know twitch chat overlay feature and even on the website there's no mention of it so i think the official word is that this isn't possible using the elgato software but i figured out a way of doing it and i wanted to share that with you guys to save you having to use both softwares in conjunction with each other so the first thing we're going to do is exactly the same step as you would take if you were trying to do this using obs we're going to go and search for CapChat, which is a sort of plugin or a program that's developed by NightDev, who do all sorts of things for streamers. Now we're going to go to the nightdev.com forward slash CapChat site here. And you're going to need to click on install for OBS or XSplit. Now I know that it works for OBS. We're not actually going to be using OBS, but I know if you click on this particular button, it will work. So why not go for that? Here, you're going to need to download the CapChat plugin. Um, and I think, you know, depending on what you're using is what you choose here. I went with the browser, Windows browser, because that's what I'm using. I've already got it downloaded, though. So we're going to jump forward to after you've installed this and we're going to carry on. You know, once you have that installed, you want to come back here and click on next. Now from here, you're going to put in your Twitch name, your username, not the URL as it says there. Uh, you need to put in your Twitch username. And then all these settings are things that I'll leave you to read in your own time. Once you're setting this up for yourself, you'll get to choose whether you want the chat to fade and whether you want to show bots and prevent clipping and all those different things. But the setting that uh, could be important is the theme. Now I personally go for the Sonos 1440p theme. Now I haven't actually tried it with no theme, but whenever I choose any of these, they all come out pretty much looking the same. So it might be something that doesn't actually work with the Elgato software, but the chat does still work. It's just gonna come through looking like a basic chat. It looks fine. Um, I personally go for 1440p because I think that affects the actual size of the font. And that's the one that I found easiest to sort of set up. So I've got the font size and the box size correct on my stream. But you can go with any one and sort of uh, use trial and error to figure out the one that you prefer. So once we've chosen our theme, you're going to click next, and here you're going to be giving um, you're going to be given a URL. Now this URL you need to copy, and we're going to leave it there at step three of five. We're not going to go any further because now we're going to go across to our actual capture software here, the Elgato software. And from here, the first thing you're going to need to do is go into the gear cog at the very top, the overall settings. And on the first tab here, the capture tab, you need to make sure that enable stream command is ticked because stream command is what we're going to use for this function to work. So once you've done that, click OK. I'm actually recording at the moment, so I have to just cancel out of there. Now you'll notice that I currently have the stream command sort of uh, row available here. If you don't see that, it's probably because it's just closed down. So above all your recording buttons, you'll have that arrow next to stream command, just pop that out. And I'm just gonna show you that I have one set up here. If I activate this set of overlays, you'll notice that the chat pops up on screen with no background, you know, there's no white background. If you were to copy your URL from your popped out chat on the Twitch website, you could do that and copy it here and have it in the overlay, but it would have a white background because it would be a direct copy of the window itself. But because we've used CapChat, we've created this version of the window with no background so that we can see through and it just shows up the chat on its own. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on one of these other sets of overlays 
and we're going to go to edit scenes. Now I'm going to right click here and I'm going to remove all the overlays. Now you can do that with any of these and you don't have to worry about losing the default set of uh, you know, overlays. Maybe you've set one up yourself. Um, you can come back here and just click to reset to default and that will bring back everything that was there before. Obviously that doesn't work with one you've set up yourself because if I was to reset this one to default, it would go back to before I'd actually added these. But you can use one of these default ones and remove everything without worrying about losing it. So we're gonna make this one blank and we're still in the edit uh, mode here. We're gonna go to add overlay. Now here you get the option to add a web page, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to paste in the URL that we just copied from CapChat that is uh, you know, going to give us access to our personal chat because we put in our Twitch details. Now first of all, what I'm going to show you is the automatic setting, because here you've got the resolution setting that you can change to any size. You can put in a custom size if you want. Now the automatic setting is going to add it as a box that we can resize without the font size changing. So although you see it stretch for a split second, when we let go of the arrow, when we get let go of the sort of resizing arrow here, it reverts back to the original size. The font size isn't going to change no matter what we do with this box. So that's the automatic setting, but you might find that the font size itself is too small or too large or you know, you want to play around with it. So that's where the resolution setting comes in. Now, if we were to change the resolution to a custom size, bearing in mind that all of these preset resolutions aren't really set up for use with, um, with chat, because chat isn't something you're supposed to be able to overlay using this uh, particular program. This is kind of a bit of a workaround. So I wouldn't go with any of these because they refer to kind of image sizes because that's really for overlaying images onto your stream. So I would create your own custom size. Now, what this means is that the size you input is the size that the box will need to be for the font size to be default. So if you're happy with the basic font size that we had on the automatic uh, setting, then you would just choose the size that you want your box to be you could technically just resize that automatic box that we had set up a moment ago, but this allows you to slightly change the size of the box and keep the font size the same, or maybe change the size of the font. It's really a case of trial and error. Now I'm going to give you an example. I usually go for 400 by 500. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you need your box to be 400 by 500. We need to put in the URL again, of course. What that means is that if I set this box size to 400 by 500, then the font is going to look correct. But if we stretch out the box, but keep it to the same scale. So if we increase the width by the same percentage as we increase the height, then the font is still going to look correct, but it's going to get bigger. You know, the scaling is going to be right. And you can actually check the scaling based on these boxes. That's what the little squares are for. If these squares are perfectly square, that means that you've got the aspect ratio correct. So we put in 400 by 500, which means that the height needs to be a quarter bigger than the width, if that makes sense. So you can now resize the box to stretch out the font size to a larger or smaller size. But it may be that you get the font size correct, but you actually want the box to be bigger or smaller. And again, that's just a bit of trial and error. You need to change the resolution and you can even, you know, go with a different uh, scaling. So if you thought you wanted a nice long, uh, thin box down the side of your screen, then you would need to set the resolution to something like, let's say, uh, let's say 100 by 600. So what that means, as you can see, we've got all these stretched out boxes because of the aspect ratio for, oh, oh my bad, I've actually, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a glitch with this. If you make the box too small, then it kind of <laughs> removes the X button and it removes the arrow resizing. So we're going to just do that again. Um, 
my apologies. Let's change it to 200 by 800 so we don't get that same problem again. So this is going to create a box that needs to be long and thin for the font size to look correct. Now, if we go too far, it's going to cause that same issue again that we had with the other box. But you notice there that uh, the font is quite large. If we make it smaller here. Yeah, you kind of get the idea. You can play around with the different resolution settings. You can find the size of the box that you would like. Then you can either resize the box to change the size of the font or you can simply, for instance, if I if I wanted a box the same size as this one that was set to 400 by 500, but I want the font size to be a bit larger, I would actually need to make the opposite change to the box itself. So if you want the font to be larger, then you need to make the box smaller. And if you want the font to be smaller, you need to make the box larger. So if we do a box that's half the size again, so in other words, we did have 400 by 500, let's go 600 by 750. There we go. Now what that means is that because we've got a larger box, if we make this box exactly the same size as the original 400 by 500 one, the box is the same size, but as you can tell by the little squares inside and the font itself, the font is smaller because we made the resolution larger. And it's the same principle with uh, TV screens and computer screens. You know, images get smaller if the resolution is larger. Um, that's very much a generalization, but you get the idea. Now, it might just be a case of a lot of trial and error, and you might want to change the size of your box each time you do a stream, depending on what game you're playing. And it's quite handy being able to have that automatic resolution setting. Although the font size is quite small, it is readable. So if you add it as an automatic size box, then the font is always going to stay the same size. You can resize the box as much as you want, and it's always going to stay that same default size. But if you do want to make very precise changes, you want a very specific size font or you want a very specific size box, then you are going to need to play around with the resolution, make the resolution smaller if you want the text inside the box to be larger and vice versa. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, obviously, we can go back to let's not save that. We can go back to the one that I had set up before and you'll see that the text is coming up. Now, the way it works is that obviously all these boxes and the white background will disappear, as we saw earlier. You'll have noticed when we showed the uh, example right at the beginning that the text was just showing up on its own. There's one more thing to explain to you guys. Um, I just noticed I've misspelt episode there. That's embarrassing. I think it was uh, <laughs> just my quick typing. Anyway, if you want to be able to upload a recording of your stream with the text chat or the, uh, you know, the... Um, overlaid Twitch chat on the screen and you want to be able to upload that to YouTube so that people watching your videos later can see the discussion that you had with your viewers then what you're going to need to do is come to the live streaming tab of the software here click on the cob sorry the cog there and um, you're going to want to tick the enable stream copy now what that does is every time you stream by clicking this button down here, whether it's to YouTube or Twitch, it's going to make a copy of that stream. It's going to record a copy and it's going to put that in your output folder, whatever folder you have set where all your recordings go to. Now that means that you don't have to actually record your stream using the record button. You can do if you want a 1080p version of it. Say you're streaming at 720 and you want to record a 1080p version of your stream, then you can record it at a higher resolution. And that resolution is displayed up here, which you can change in the settings here. But we're talking about being able to actually record your stream with your voice included, of course, but also all of your overlays included. So if you have this particular setting, the enable stream copy set up, then you're going to get a recording of your stream with all the overlaid chat on screen as well so that when you upload it to YouTube later you can edit it do whatever you like once it's uploaded to YouTube then everybody watching it back will be able to see all the comments people are making they'll be able to understand you know when you're talking to people maybe you're answering questions to them 
um, or for them, then they're going to understand the interchange of ideas that you're having with your viewers. So that's quite a nice, fairly new feature to the software, I believe. Um, but there you have it, guys. You don't need to have OBS if you want to overlay your chat onto your streams and also record those streams for YouTube later. I hope that's been helpful. I know it's something that I was struggling with for a long time and I couldn't find an answer to. So although I don't often do these types of videos, I thought because I had found an answer to it, I would share it with you guys and hopefully it aids you uh, during your streams and your YouTubing and all the stuff that you get involved with. <laughs> So thank you for watching guys. If you're interested in checking out more gaming content, which is what I specialize in, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out my other videos. But for now, have a good one guys and I will catch you all very soon.